My name is Jonathan Norman from the Major Projects Knowledge Hub and this morning I'm an avatar in something called Cube with its creator Professor Eddie Obeng and one of the Cube tutors Leonardo Teixeira. Uh, I'm going to invite Eddie to give us a tour of this extraordinary space which is a wonderful place for learning, collaboration, innovation and indeed simply communication. So, so Eddie and Leonardo, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Eddie, can I kick off by asking you just really to introduce us to Cube and telling us a, a little bit about what it is and where it came from? Okay, so that was three questions in one, Jonathan. Should I start <laughs> by explain? Should I start by explaining where it came from and then uh, and then work from there? That might be the easiest one. So well, I'm going to I'm going to use the big um, screen which you're facing. Um, okay. There's a. Uh, let me try and put on there. A little drawing board so I can scribble and then you'll be able to follow what I'm saying okay so if you come a bit closer with me so just click Indeed. on the yellow triangle above you'll zoom yep. in okay Got great. That. so uh, so just to quickly explain cube comes from a very simple place and uh, if people are involved in projects they'll recognize this the idea was very simple which is if we put now over here and we put the past over here and we split them by about 30 years all of us know that in terms of the pace of change, in terms of the pace of uh, the level of complexity, and in terms of the level of connections, now is much higher than the past, and the two have sort of grown exponentially. Everyone sort of knows that. We know that at the same time, as the world has happily got more complicated, for most of us, our ability to learn and change, especially if you're in an organization, has been pretty flat. And so that means that it doesn't matter which industry you're in, you've probably gone from a world where you could learn faster than you were, the world was changing, and therefore things like your plans worked and were quite solid, uh, your budgets worked, waterfall probably worked as your methodology, to a world which can change much faster than you can learn. And all of a sudden, we discover things like we need to rethink how we approach our projects. Our projects are not always clear. So sometimes we're not sure exactly what we're going to do or how we're going to do it. So waterfall stops working so well. So we end up with things like rapid application, parallel development. We end up with prototyping. We end up with agile. And we end up with different ways of dealing with what I call unclear, foggy projects and uh, projects where there's a goal but no uh, um, definite method called a quest. As that happens, at the same time, because of the connections, everything has gone a bit bigger, and a bit more global. So you suddenly find that the project team, which was all sitting in one little office over here, is now, in this world, spread, I'm just trying to draw a whole globe there, spread all over the globe, uh, with little pockets everywhere. You've got people trying to have scrums. They struggle to have, say, a global scrum. You've got people trying to communicate. And so they put in place uh, things like clarity, different methods for managing their projects. But we know the date methods aren't working. How do we know that? We know that quite simply because if they were, you wouldn't have conference calls. You wouldn't have meetings. You wouldn't have scrums. Because the complexity of what we're having to deal with means we have to talk to each other. And so that's where Cube came from. Cube is a mechanism to help people to learn how to function in what we call the new world or the world after midnight and to provide all the methods, the tools, the productivity which you need to be able to function effectively and deliver programs and projects. So that's where it came from. Does that make sense, Jonathan? It does. It does. Thank you very much. I, I incidentally, I, I heard a, a new term yesterday, which is bricolage, uh, which apparently is where you just mash together all the different types of project. So you've decided that waterfall works sometimes, <laughs> but works sometimes, and you just pick a mix, which I thought was fantastic. So we're, we're creating new words the whole time and new ideas. So, uh, yeah, so I mean, you. yeah, it, that's a really good, good, good way of looking at it. I mean, in my world, there are four types of projects. So there are the ones where you have no clue at all what you're doing or how to do it, but it should have been done yesterday. I call those foggy projects, just like being lost in the fog. You get the same level of discomfort. And then there, at the other end of the spectrum with the waterfall, I call those painting by numbers. 
where you know what you're doing, you know how you're doing it. It's just the intricacy and complexity of it. And then I've got what I call, you know, King Arthur and the quest for the Holy Grail, where they knew they wanted the Holy Grail, but they had no idea how to get to it. And then the last one, I always think about, you know, making a film, sticking it on YouTube, nobody watching it because the script is missing. And I call that a movie. And that takes us from like 100% knowing what and how to knowing what you're doing, but not how to do it, to knowing how you're going to do it, but not what's going to come out, all the way down to no clue what to do or how to do. And I think your bricolage term is saying choose the right set of behaviors, yeah. tools, etc., cetera, uh, to match the situation, which is a good insight. Because these days, everyone tries to use Agile for everything. And of course, Agile yeah. works best in fog. It doesn't yeah. work so well in the other situations. Yes, yes, very good, excellent. Good. And, and in terms of the physicality of Cube, um, we're currently, if I scroll back, we're currently in your cubicle, um, yep. which is a space. So what are the kinds of spaces that you have in, in, in Cube? Do you use them? OK, so the first thing probably to explain is that um, Cube is designed so that in about five minutes, you forget you're looking at a computer screen. This, We've tried to make it as close to reality as possible. Um, and that's really, really important. The second is, we also learned that unless people can find a new way of working, what they do is they do what Henry Ford always threatened us that people would do, which is they just try and build a faster horse. Cube is a digital solution. Digital works differently to real life. It can do things you could never imagine doing. So for example, I just dragged you and we both were looking at that screen. Now, your image of the screen we were looking at was exactly the same as mine. In real life, if we were standing shoulder to shoulder in front of a screen, you'd be two feet away from me. Your point of view would be different. So yeah. digital lets us store information, search information, go back through conversations. Um, we would always, for example, start every cube session with something we call hopes and fears. So once we start, we'd say, what are we trying to achieve with this interview? Let's make it flow really well. Um, and so if you join me, there's a place called hopes and fears. When I say yeah. a place, I'm talking about a place, a spot in the, the, this room. We call the rooms cubicles. So yeah. there's a spot in this room called hopes and fears. I, I've just invited you there. Um, I can invite you. But anyone can invite you because we've also made sure that the culture on Cube matches that new world we talked about. It's a collaborative culture. It's not designed for a hierarchy. And over here, we would be able to say, I would be, you would be able to say what you wanted from the interview under the hopes. So if you could grab a sticky note, which lives in the bottom right, and stick it up there. And you'd also be able to add any of the fears. Okay, and you notice you moved yours, I moved mine, and I can move yours, and you can move mine, you and me, because we're in the same, we're in the same room. So it's important people understand that once you log in, you literally are in the same space. Uh, on Cube, we now have the equivalent of real estate floor area uh, in terms of teaching rooms, conference rooms, uh, project workout rooms, program coordination offices, etc equivalent to about four times the Empire State Building. Wow. <laughs> so so digital allows you to do things which are very, very unusual. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. I've explained about the culture. The culture on Cube is really important. A lot of our productivity yeah. gains come from the culture. And I'll explain that before I show you around the room. Um, there's a big whiteboard in here. The place yeah. it's at is a place called Whiteboard. <laughs> Why not? OK. And uh, if you come there with me, Jonathan. Yes, indeed. OK, you'll see that there's a there's a huge whiteboard over here. And in the middle of this whiteboard, I've got a little chart here. And I'm just going to zoom in on this chart for a second. And I'm going to ask you to join me. I'm standing there. If you click on the yellow triangle above my head, you'll join me. Or yeah. alternatively, you're here. OK, so this is what people used to want to do. Do more of the same, market and sell the products you have, lead from the top, control, have clarity, and so on and so forth. But if you ask most organizations, you hear them saying things like, we want more innovation, better customer focus, partnering with customers, leading from the front, lots of collaboration, people working through networks. The list they give you for what they want today is different from what they used to want. 
Yeah. Now, why is that important? Because you can't e easily do any of these things in, in the normal world. To make that transition, you have to persuade people on why they need to do it. Then you've yeah. got to show them a new set of skills of how they do it. And then you've got to support them to actually do it. Yeah. And that's what I said about Cube. It's designed to teach people how to do things differently and then to provide the method for them to do it. Yes. So yes. for example, yes. with collaboration, you saw us just now messing around with sticky notes. We can search information, we can talk, uh, and so on and so forth. But let me show you around this cubicle because that's what you actually asked me. Yeah, indeed. So this, this is my office. This is actually my office. And if you don't mind, Jonathan, I'm just going to ask you to come with me as I go. It'll be easier. So if you just yes. tag yourself to my shoulder, then you'll move as I move. Indeed. Okay. So you tag yourself to your shoulder just by clicking on the tagging icon on the right-hand side. So um, I've got a lovely view out of my window. Um, this is my desk. Um, in, I've, I've actually got a, a decent computer here. On the left, I've got a spreadsheet or something I'm working on. Uh, I'll drag you in by clicking on the yellow triangle. It's just a spreadsheet. It's the normal sort of thing you can do on a spreadsheet, if you see what I mean. On the right, I've yeah. got a text document, a Word document, anything else. Uh, I was messing around in here earlier with a client. But to understand how collaboration would work on Cube, Let's imagine we were putting together a, an outline or a proposal or something like that. And let's say I was writing it. So it is introduction. How do you spell duction? Duction. Okay. <laughs> and I put in here um, uh, this method of working is important. Okay. And let's say yep. we were in the same cubicle at the same time. And you wanted to, first of all, correct my spelling and add another sentence. Can you show us yep. how you do that? Indeed, uh, I'll just, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you can see the outside is now sort of reddish. That's because you're the person typing. Yeah. And uh, when you stop typing, if I take over, you see it goes green. Yeah. Okay, so Cube is, has all the functionality you would ever dream of. The way I describe it sometimes is if you took a webinar, took Link, took Slack, took uh, Skype, um, took Adobe Connect, uh, and you they all got together and you put them in a blender and you wazzed them up. All yeah. that functionality is on Cube, everything from video conferencing right the way through. Um, yeah. So there's no need to ask, can Cube do? The answer is yes. The yeah. question yeah. is, what are you going to do? So that was my yeah. desk. So you've got some sense of how easy it is even just to work together. Uh, here's my notice board. Um, I haven't, I haven't my, my time out line for today because <laughs> I came straight into this and I started a bit late, but yeah. if I was planning my, my day, it would happen over here. Um, the notice board is quite useful because, uh, it also allows us to, allows people to leave me messages. Um, yeah. and up here, for example, is a, a, a communications card. Um, yeah. so Jonathan, I think you've come off my shoulder, so you might want to come back to my shoulder so I can Indeed. drag you around. Indeed. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, and then this is the screen we were we were scribbling on earlier. Uh, yeah. There's a door round to your right. I don't know whether yeah. you can see through the door or not, but uh, you okay. you could yeah. probably see through to the, a room on the other side, even. Yeah. I suspect. Yeah. Okay. So that's the room yeah. we're going to go into next. And then here we have the white board. White boards are magic. They're better than real life. Each of these tabs allows you to store a tremendous amount of information. And because it's digital, it's not like a, you finish work in an, an office and then all of a sudden, or a meeting room, and then you have to take all your documents down. You don't have to do that. So can you imagine the productivity gains you get just by not having to reinvent everything all the time? Uh, over yeah. here on the whiteboard where we uh, worked on the hopes and fears, there's yeah. a shelf here with what we call pets or performance enhancement tools. So every cubicle comes with a standard set. Yeah. Uh, so this is the set in a typical cubicle. Hopes and fears to get everyone's goals early. Quick reviews. You can do a 30 second review. Think about that in your projects. Gap leap, putting together a business case in seven minutes. And these are standard methods. And these tools are methods I've developed over the years and I've published in my 10 books. And they're all available live on Cube. 
So just quickly, I just want to show you two very, very quick things. If we go to this view presentation screen again, one of the things which is really important to understand is once you've been in this space and you, you've seen a video of it, you sort of forget there's a human being at the other end. So I want to just tell you a quick, quick story. So I was in Scotland and I walked into um, uh, something called the Costler building, which is like a public sector meeting area. And as I walked in, I was walking around the coffee area and I saw this chap intent with his headset and his laptop and um and he, he was just intent we were all drinking coffee and he there met multiple different people i had never met this chap before and then i looked over his shoulder and look can you see what i spotted that's hopes and fears yeah <laughs> so i realized uh health health sector in scotland is one of our biggest cube users uh, i always think that's really important for people to understand because everyone assumes you need really expensive new equipment to run cube and an amazingly fast network and the answer is no yeah. we work with uh, even part of the uh, economy who, who maybe don't have all the technology which uh, large corporates do so he was sitting here he was in hopes years so I, I went and sort of tapped him on the shoulder and he looked round. And he had no idea who I was <laughs> because of course I've never worked with him. So then I asked people to send in photographs. And this is uh, Suzanne, who was on a session on Cube whilst out in the wilds. <laughs> and um, yeah. she sent in this photograph as, 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 as evidence of working together. It's one of our facilitators, that's Charlie King. This is also quite a funny one. This is a workshop I did. And you see the laptops on people's desks? So yeah. they all had their own laptops. They had all logged on to Cube and they were working in the same cubicle. Why? Because they work in different parts of the world. So when they left the meeting, all the work they'd done was actually already at their offices and they could continue working. So don't see Cube as a meeting place. See it as a parallel world with a different culture, which lets you work and deliver much more fun and much, much faster. Right, uh, these right. are them again because they realized I was taking a picture of them. Let me show you some other places. So this is a this is type of design used for program cubicles. I'll spin us round first so you can see what's here. Um, over here is a, a confidential uh, seating area. Why is that useful? Because sometimes you want to have confidential conversations, and it's quite important to be able to do that. Um, and if you sit there, it more or less cuts out all the sound. In fact, the way the cube works is the moment you sit down, you can only hear the people you're sitting with. Uh, Leo, I'm wondering, can you? Grab a seat whilst you're talking. If you join him, you'll discover you can suddenly hear him. So click on the chair. And suddenly... Here we are. Hi, Leo. <laughs> Very good. I can hear you, um, but I can't hear Eddie. And um, Eddie can't hear I think it. he's joining us now. All right, OK. And then. And, and I've just joined you. So Jonathan, follow me again, and I'll give you a, an overview of the space, OK? So are you scared of heights? No, not at all. OK, so if you sit on my shoulder, come with me. Yep, I should be doing that. Now, there we go. So, Whoa. okay. This is a typical cubicle we would use for a program team of about 20 or 25 or 30. So each person gets their own desk down here and they get their own tablet. We call them slates. So you can leave them notes on their desk, stickies or topics or whatever, conversations. On their desk, they can work on spreadsheets, all the things I showed you in the other place. We've got two big screens up here. One everyone can work on, and this one is just for display. We have a discussion board where we can teach people stuff and share things. And if you have a facilitator, and you will do, because Cube is a facilitated service to start off with, that's where they'll explain how to do things. So that's the large whiteboard over there, OK? And then the red carpets always represent areas, as you saw in the other place when we sat at the chairs. The red carpets represent the fact that the sound will be quiet. So yeah. if you had a group of people and you wanted them to work in parallel on a really important topic on this large workshop board, what you would do is you would quite simply come to a switch operator like that. And yeah. uh, you would probably just do something like turn some red carpets on. There we go. OK. So if you uh, uh, were to come to this large work whiteboard, Imagine that you went and stood on this red carpet, and if you could do that, and I went to the one next to it, as you move forward to the this carpet over here, you'll discover that I've gone quiet, okay? okay? And you can turn it off. So if you wanted to share, you can share. So Cube is really, really easy to use. We've got, a, in this particular cubicle, 
we would usually have like an ops room. So the individual projects we would analyze in here. Uh, this particular one we set up because people will have frequently asked questions. In the project cubicle, this is where you'd have the update, your RAG analysis for the different projects. In this particular one, we just used it for things like answering people's questions about what do you do about learning, what do you do about doing the work. Jonathan, if you could take us to a quick project cubicle, that would be fantastic. Okay, so here we go. Are you joining? Okay. So. The, this cubicle is like the, my, my office cubicle, it's a different color, but what's interesting here is we have everything you need for trying to drive through the project. So we have the project life cycle, define, refine, implement, close. We have uh, tools, so tools for review, tools for decision making, tools for quick 30-second uh, updates. We've got cheat sheets, so you can do analysis and de-risk your project. You can anticipate the learning needs of your teams. So basically, everything which you need to do is already baked into this cubicle. Wonderful. I'll stop Wonderful. at that point and let you ask me summary, summarizing questions. I could perhaps summarize. That would be a good exercise to see, okay. see what I've learned from, from our tour of Cube. So basically, you, you've created a space which people can come into uh, at any time from anywhere in the world. And you've created some spaces and some tools that people can use to communicate and collaborate and both to share ideas, to frame ideas, to develop new ways of working. And it's a space where they can save their work so that they can use it uh, genuinely like, like a project office if, if that's what they want. And, and there are a number of different types of artifact that you've got that really match what happens in the real world. So you've got screens yes. for showing videos, you've got whiteboards, and you've got the other similar document spaces. We've had a fantastic tour. Um, so Eddie and Leo, thank you so very much for your time and for taking us on a tour of Cube. I hope very much that you've enjoyed this tour of Cube. If you'd like to experience it for yourself and for free, I recommend you sign up for the next Cube Inspiration Monthly when you'll be able to join a facilitated session and learn more about this wonderful resource. And don't forget to follow our major projects Knowledge Hub channel on YouTube so that you'll be alerted to each new masterclass interview as it is posted.